Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlotthauer here in the home weather office the day after Christmas. I hope you all had a great Christmas Eve and a great Christmas Day as I did, because guess what I got? The meteorologist drive street sign. Look at that. I gave uh, my dad gave that to me for my Christmas present, and I want to thank him for that because that's going to make things a lot more interesting here in the home weather office. But I also want to thank you all for getting me to almost 18,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel in a little over a year. So I want to thank you all for that very much because I can't do these videos without your awesome support with you all sharing this with their family and friends on social media. But anyways, in today's video, we are going to be looking at the United States, including for Canada, because there are big weather pattern changes coming for early January with a massive stratospheric warming event that could trigger some very cold temperatures that have not seen these temperatures yet this winter for canada for much of the united states the weather is about to take a huge turn for the worse so without further ado let's get talking about the weather because there is truly a lot to talk about so here's a look at the pacific satellite imagery wide including for the united states and First of all, we got to look at the Pacific because this is going to be the biggest influencer on what is going to be happening in early January. So first of all, we have two big systems out there headed towards California and the Pacific Northwest. This is going to bring about quite a bit of rainfall for many areas that haven't seen a lot, especially for central and northern California. And so this is going to help uh, fill up the reservoirs, going to bring us some nice needed snow. But also, look what's going on across the Midwest over there. There's a big type of system bringing freezing rain, heavy snow, strong winds. This one has also led to a lot of power outages. So without further ado, let's look at the weather models because we need to see with what is going to be happening into the future. So taking a look at the 18Z GFS model for December the 26th, 2023, the reason why this video will be out late is because that way we get you the latest model data possible on this YouTube channel because, yeah, there's big changes that you all really need to be aware of. I mean, we're talking some of the biggest changes so far this winter season, and it is going to come in pretty quickly according to some of our global model guidance that we have. So the GFS model for Wednesday, first of all, this is for the afternoon hours. We have a good size system impacting California, the Pacific Northwest as well. And then, of course, we have this system pretty much parked across the Midwest, bringing some colder temperatures, but also got some freezing rain and snowfall to talk about. The freezing rain part is going to actually wrap up overnight tonight, but still, power outages there, lots of slippery roadways. Please be careful, folks, if you're coming back from Christmas vacation. You have to be back early for that. Just really watch your driving because there's a lot of ice still on the roadways. We also have a good size system bringing some light to moderate precipitation across the Pacific North, or the, not the Pacific Northwest, the Atlantic, uh, or right off the Atlantic into the, the Northeastern US. Uh, a nice warm system, so no snowfall with that one. Then, of course, up here in Canada, looking pretty dry, unless you're in the extreme northern portions, that's where you're seeing some snow. So when we uh, play this through, you will see uh, basically that there are more storms coming. There's just not one or two or three or four. We have another one impacting um, the Pacific Northwest and California. This is for Saturday. So the first system from Wednesday into Thursday morning, a break Thursday afternoon into Friday. We might see some dense valley fog if you're in the Central Valley. Then a second, more stronger system comes in on Saturday. I made a blog post on my Sacramento Weather Center uh, page. If you all want to check that out, there will be a link in the description after watching this video. And so there's going to be a lot of inclement weather for the West, but we really need it. But still, um, some inclement weather too across the eastern U.S. Some snow for the higher elevations, some gusty winds around that surface low. But it's not really until we get later on in the period when the pattern does change. Another system wants to impact Southern California by January 1st. So if you are going to the Rose Parade, 
Yeah, stay tuned for my forecast for that because that might be impacted, especially the Rose Bowl game uh, for a Monday afternoon. You might see some inclement weather there. Another system tries to develop by the time we go into January 1st over, say, potentially for Indiana and Ohio. I'm sure, Ethan, you're probably like, oh, if it could snow on New Year's Day, oh my goodness, I'll be so excited, you know. Uh, but again, this is, a little, this is getting a little distant in a fantasy land on our GFS model. And then another system impacts California yet again. Maybe another system kind of striving the deep south here by the 3rd and the 4th of January. But take note here. Look what we got going on up here in the Arctic. We got Arctic high pressure systems beginning to develop. What does that do? Well, it means it's going to get exceptionally cold. Some of the coldest temperatures that we have had in nearly a couple of years, potentially up there in Canada. And it's all on its way down eventually. Not right away. Beyond the 10-day forecast is when that actually happens. But before it does, we get one more system impacting California. And this could be a really dynamic system, perhaps. This is out to 300 hours. So again, we're looking out to the first full week of January, uh, just beyond the new year. And you know the GFS. It's going to go into fantasy land. It's going to go crazy with a lot of stuff. So whatever you see here, please do not trust it because it is going really really wild beyond the forecast and i mean look at this very dynamic system for the northeast but yeah if it does happen this could be a very impactful system now something that i don't normally talk about or cover in my youtube weather videos is a stratospheric warming event that is expected ben Knoll has talked about it the weather community is going crazy nuts over this because this is going to really influence the upcoming weather pattern, okay? And I'm telling you, folks, you thought it's been really warm and you might not see a winter. Well, if the pattern, uh, if the stratospheric warming event does happen, you could see some of the coldest temperatures in January. So you're going from way up here to way down here, and it's going to happen pretty stinking quick. So let's take a look at this. So this is our GFS model, the 10 millibar temperature Celsius anomaly. So again, looking at the stratosphere, this is not um, going to, well, of course, this doesn't impact directly at the surface because this is really high up, right around 80 to 90,000 feet. But what goes on above also affects on what goes on below. So when we, uh, when we play this through, if my weather bell would cooperate on me today, that would be very helpful. And we can see um, this stratospheric warming event is really going to get underway. And as we play this through uh, fairly quickly, see this warm blob here? That's the stratospheric warming event, or SWW, or Sudden Stratospheric Warming Event, something like that. There's an acronym for it, but it's going to be pretty significant and i'm telling you so significant that i did check windy.com for the 10 millibar temperatures gonna be right around 30 degrees above zero okay at 80 to 90 thousand feet 30 to 40 degrees potentially above zero that is exceptionally e extreme i mean very significant and this is going to really mess with our pattern okay no it's not going to be warm over canada please don't worry about that but what this is going to result in is a break off of the polar vortex so, so one lobe of that polar vortex is actually going to be moving into canada and it's going to really be bringing down some colder temperatures. And when, I, when we look at the temperature anomaly or when we look at the upper level wind pattern to support that, actually, you know what, we'll look at that in a second. But here's your temperature anomaly forecast and look at the pattern change, okay? We know it's going to be warm over the next week or so over Canada, but look what all happens. This pattern just changes. I mean, this is, uh, we can see this as early as 10 days from now over first over Canada, and then eventually spreading southward over much of the Midwest, the Northern Plains, but mainly also the West is going to get in on this. We don't know about the Northeast just yet, but what we do know is when cold air moves south and we try to get some warm air moving north like this, we're going to get a big system within this regime, okay, within this boundary of warmer than average to colder than average. So there's going to be a front here, 
We're going to have a lot of low pressure systems that could get attached to that. And if they break off, we could see some big nasty nor'easters for the northeast. And El Nino has called for that, right? So no surprise by that, that if we do get this huge stratospheric warming event, it could favor the Midwest, even portions of the Great Lakes, but also especially the West. You see some very cold temperatures, well below average, with another surge of colder Arctic air coming in out of uh, Canada. So again, you're going from seeing temperatures that are unbelievably warm to seeing temperatures here in portions of the northern U.S. could be negative 40 degrees, negative 45. Now, what I just said is that there's a lot of uncertainty too with that. But wow, if this verifies, folks, I'm telling you, if it verifies, you better hope it doesn't because it is going to get awfully cold in the northern or in the higher end 48 states, including for Canada that hasn't seen much of a winter yet. So when we look at the 500 millibar height anomaly, not really height anomaly, but the wind chart, that I like looking at here. This is at 18,000 feet. So this is not at 10 or not at 10 millibars or 80 or 90,000 feet. This is much lower in the tropopause. And this really influences our weather. But the stratospheric warming event is going to also influence where our polar vortex actually sets up at. And how far south that goes will really impact on who is going to get the coldest temperatures potentially on record for some location. So let's play this through, shall we, schlop dog? Okay, let's play this through. So of course, we got this cutoff low that is moving through the Midwest and then across the Eastern seaboard through the rest of this week into the weekend. And that's again, bringing the, the nasty weather. But look what all happens, okay? Pay attention to this lobe right up in here. See this vortex? We see winds doing this, we see winds doing that, right? Right up there near uh, Greenland, okay? And why do they call it Greenland? I don't know, because there's so much snow on it all the time. It's our ice sheet. It should be called ice sheet land, not Greenland, okay? So going forward, we can see where that vortex actually goes. See this? It gets closer, right? It goes from here to here. And then eventually, it's going to drop on down. Look at that. Just it, it paraballs all the way down. And now look at this. We got, well, actually, let's go to our height anomaly. So now, we got our polar vortex, our freezing line that goes way down here. Okay, so where you cannot find that freezing line in portions of the Arctic Ocean, okay, near the North Pole, you're going to find it in Iowa, potentially, and Missouri by the 10th day of January. And boy, if that actually happens, I'm telling you, a lot of people are going to be complaining about how cold it's going to be because of how far south this actually gets. And look at the amplification on that trough. I mean, this could be a really big deal if this actually ends up being the case over the Great Lakes, even over Indiana, Ohio. Uh, over, uh, say, Wisconsin and the Dakotas, could see some very cold temperatures. And I'll tell you, uh, I mean, temperatures in the single digits potentially for northern Indiana, for much of the northern plains, you can see where that polar vortex clearly is. And also you can even see it at 700 millibars right there. Look at that. Just watch that. Just it, it just moves southward. And the lobe of colder air, wherever that is, is where you're going to see the wintry cold temperature. This could also be supported by the Global Ensemble Forecasting System. This is the GEFS, right? The Ensemble also indicating that our AO, okay, our AO is going to go negative. And what that means? Well, it's going to happen in early January and potentially again by the early to middle part of January. And that's going to mean some very cold temperatures, like I said, because oh, uh, the negative AO means you got high pressure in higher latitudes, so that's over the North Pole, and then, you know, that cold air is able to go this way, it's able to spread out all across the Northern Hemisphere, and if one of you guys gets impacted by one of these lobes of cold air, which, again, in this case, will be the, the United States, things are going to change, I'm telling you right now, and when we look at the EPO, 
also goes negative in early January. That means it's going to be very cold for uh, the West. If we look at the PNA also, look at this PNA positive now, going to take a big drop by the first full week of January. And when things line up, got a negative PNA, we got a negative AO, we got a negative Arctic Oscillation, or NAO that is, and this is the AO, uh, with a WPO that's probably going to remain somewhat positive, things are going to get wild. I promise you guys about that. Even the Euro Extension Ensemble forecast is also indicating this. We have our first drop here, maybe another drop towards the, uh, the middle of January, then it goes really positive. Look at that. And then it really falls hard again, potentially by early February. Now again, this is very far out. We're still in December. We have all of January to get through. Okay. And this is in February, but wow, I'm telling you, this pattern is really acting crazy. It goes up and down, up and down. Oh my goodness. It's going wild, wild, wild. Maybe it's because of Butter Dog. Maybe it's because of Sunny. We nickname him Sonny because his name on Discord is Sonny. Maybe you both are responsible for this wild weather pattern change. Maybe you all in the Midwest have been begging, where's my cold weather hat? I mean, you guys are provoking it, and that's extremely dangerous to do. Don't provoke anymore because it's not going to get you anywhere. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But anyways, I don't know who is behind all of this wild weather going on in higher latitudes. Maybe the GFS likes to go crazy with things. Maybe this is fantasy land after all. Maybe we'll never see a stratospheric warming event, but there are indications that it's coming. And when it happens, you guys better hope you're ready for some of the coldest temperatures probably in a couple of years in portions of the United States. But anyways, if you found this video very helpful and entertaining, please consider subscribing if you haven't already because you guys, I'm telling you, I love you guys, and you love me, and I hope you had a very happy Merry Christmas, and also had a great Christmas Eve as well. I, If you notice, if you looked on my community post, I did post something on our candlelight service, and that was great. That was great. I love when the candles light up in the dark, and you get a lot of them. It's just kind of like dots of light all over the place, right? Isn't that amazing? I guess you are... I mean, you all probably agree with me on that. So I hope you did enjoy this video. If you didn't, or if you did, please consider subscribing, sharing, and liking. And also, be sure you check out my Twitter page. There will be a link in the description. And also, be sure, please, folks, to check out my Sacramento Weather Center um, weather page. Yes, it's a whole new weather page that I have set up. You guys cannot miss at all. All you have to go is go down. He, well, this is on my personal page, but you can go to it, Sacramento Weather Center. There will be a link in the description below this video where you can t check out my blog. Hat just updated you all on the upcoming weather pattern. So if you don't know about that, be sure to check it out. All right, well, that's going to do it. I'll be back in the home weather office tomorrow with another detailed weather forecast. And we really got to watch on what's going to be happening in early January. New year means new weather pattern.